Welcome to Arts Roll Call, a podcast showcasing artists and arts organizations talking about the role of the arts today in Greater Lansing. I'm Robin Miner Swartz. I'm an editor and communications consultant and arts advocate. Today I'm talking with Ryan Holmes, a chalk mural and comic book artist based in Lansing, and you may also know him from driving around that amazing Ghostbusters Ecto-1 vehicle. So Ryan, thanks so much for being here. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Uh, Let's start out talking about your connection to the Arts Council of Greater Lansing. How did you first get to know them? How did you come to join the organization? Ah, I was just thinking about this uh, a few minutes ago. Uh, it has been about three years or so that I've uh, been, been a member of the organization. Uh, I've been doing art within Lansing for over a decade. And um, during that time, I had been working kind of in a silo by myself, uh, creating art uh, throughout the tin can in downtown Lansing. And um, but I had seen uh, artists who were doing more local events. And I've seen that there's different art uh, galleries, showings and things that stuff that was happening around Lansing that I wanted to be a part of. So uh, I reached out to the art council and I believe I went to a couple mixers to start with. And then I just started uh, becoming, uh, you know, present at a lot of the events and um, opportunities would come up and I was lucky enough, uh, I believe in 2019, uh, in order to have, uh, do the billboards in the sky, um, promotion where they were able to, uh, allow artists around the city to have a year with a billboard. And that really allowed my art to, uh, get seen on a larger scale and, uh, help get me to where I am now and allow me to do a lot of the community building that I do now. So, what kind of reactions did you get to that billboard? Did you have a lot of people stopping you? Um, it was, it, it's funny because it kind of shows you how um, those things kind of set, uh, how, how marketing sort of works. Uh, I thought maybe it was going to be an instantaneous reaction where it's like, oh my God, everybody can see something. Granted, I was on a digital billboard, so it would cycle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But what happened with when over a year, I want to say maybe halfway through the year, uh, that's when it became more relevant. And uh, people started syncing up the artwork that I did uh, on the billboard with stuff that I had been doing for years beforehand. Mm -hmm. And it was kind of, uh, <laughs> it was weird how, how the connection worked, but it was about uh, halfway through where I would get random texts from numbers I didn't know of people saying, I just saw your billboard, I just saw you. And uh, it was kind of, kind of creepy, but entertaining. <laughs> That's uh, great. And, uh, but yeah, in about that time, it was just something, it was something nice to be able to quickly have something to go, this is a representation of me. Uh, and the piece itself was made at such a large scale, it really, uh, it, it was meant to be something that big and it was an aerial creature. So it all kind of just worked out really nicely. That's really cool. So being a member of the arts council and having that placement on the billboard and now being a part of this larger community, did you feel like you were a part of a larger arts community in Lansing prior to joining the council or how did that shift your identity as an artist? Uh, it, it did. And it, well, the funny thing is that there are so many different forms of art and so many different people who create. And I've always considered my chalk art a, a type of performance art, especially when I'm doing it uh, like at, at a event or downtown. Um, and there are some creators who I've, who've, who've come up to me while I was doing that and be like, well, I do this type of thing. And you know, they're working out of their basement or they're a fabricator of some sort, or they only do this type of painting. And we don't, it's not necessarily as, uh, an open expression or it's not as easily visible. So it gave me uh, a connection to a lot of different artists and the creatives in our community and let me see that there are a lot of people on a lot of different levels doing a lot of different things. Um, and being able to have uh, a unification and be or in order to, for us to communicate about our processes um, about like, uh, I, I'm, I'm a lifetime learner, even when it comes to not just doing art, but just how like the art, the world of art works. So just to hear other artists and what they've gone through, you know, the materials that they use, um, their resources that they have found naturally throughout living in Michigan. Um, it's, it's just been, it's, it's been phenomenal uh, just to have that connection and also to be 
in sync with our community as a whole and, and them utilizing us as a council. That's great. Now you've you've been a Lansing resident for your entire life for a real long time, right? Oh, I, I moved to Lansing in about second grade. So okay. I mean, for the most part, uh, most of my life, yeah. Well, tell us about growing up in Lansing. What's your background like? Uh, I guess I moved here about second grade and I we moved into uh, West Lansing to the Waverly School District. Um, I <laughs> I moved into uh, the Verndale Lakes uh, Condo Association area, and you know, I remember at that point I was one kid out of I mean two who rode the bus in our whole area, but just one child really and so many cul-de-sacs all put together oh, everybody no. else so <laughs> i didn't have i didn't really make friends until school started mm. um but i did have a lot of cookies there were a lot of <laughs> there were a lot of elderly women <laughs> keeping the cookies flowing because they said there's a there's a kid outside get those get the oven started <laughs> That's great. Um, but, so that was that was phenomenal, and uh, from that you know second grade on, I made my lifelong friends that I'm mean, my best friend. And uh, growing up here, just uh, learn about Michigan and all it had to offer. Uh, enjoying the summers, uh, being outdoors. Um, I, the school district that I went to, I ended up working in um, for about 16 years. I started in childcare my senior year mm -hmm. of high school, and uh, worked up into becoming a, a uh, Title I reading recovery paraprofessional, and then uh, went into special needs uh, paraprofessional for about eight, nine years uh, for his physical and uh, both physical and uh, mental needs. So uh, I did that until I was offered. I left, I did that throughout Waverly growing up in the same community, uh, working at the schools that I, they're, went to and you know once I said just loving the community learning the kids and the families and having the generations the the people i went to school with teaching their kids and whatnot um at the same time always being an artist and doing things in the community with art uh and uh over the last three or four years i started doing summer art classes and uh taking on larger groups i always did sometimes individual uh, or like smaller lessons, but I started taking on larger, larger groups through the Fledge, and uh, I fell in love with just teaching art. I've always crafted in with what I did. I've done art for therapy, but it was always been based around curriculum. To, but to actually teach art, I uh, fell in love with it over the summer. I was uh, given the opportunity to do it for uh, Mid Michigan Leadership Academy for uh, the last school year, and. Uh, left Waverly and moved there. Um, loved it. It was uh, it's been kindergarten through eighth grade, and it's been the best best year of my life. Just growing as an artist, growing as a creative, and being able to now really fuse all that I do as an educator and an artist together, um, making sure like what I'm doing as a creative in my city will. It, I knowing that it's going to uh, have like a one-to-one -one connection with my kids. I'm creating a, an environment that they're going to grow up in and I can make it so that it's enriched by art, that it will be something that will enrich them and they will grow and add pieces to it. So uh, I'm very much so, I've, I've grown up being proud to be here and create here. I'm very much so uh, always progressively thinking forward about how I can make it easier and more acceptable, and how I can give them more resources. Uh, I, I do do a lot with uh, science fiction, and I've always been a huge fan of special effects and computers. And uh, so I'm, I'm, those are things I want them to learn that those are within the confines of art. Those are things that are expression and um, technology is making it so that that can be some of the ways that they can express themselves. So uh, it's just a, a lot of that that's been <laughs> I think I went way farther than the question. No, you, you I do that. I take the ball great. and I just like run. I don't know. <laughs> I just go, man. That's good. No, you you went down a path that I had three questions about. So you, just, it's like you're reading my notes. This is perfect. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Every, they all want to know the same thing. Now. It's right. That's right. <laughs> well, I wonder if you can talk about, as a Black artist and a teacher in our community, you are definitely encountering a lot of challenges right now, from COVID-19 shutting down schools to arts events being canceled and an overall climate of change and unrest everywhere we're turning. So can you talk about the challenges you've encountered recently and how that's influenced your art and your teaching? Yeah. Um... It's been, I think this entire time period has been a, a huge uh, wake up, but, you know, starting from the, in the order of <laughs> unraveling of events, you know, starting with the COVID, um, after the Friday, we found out that Friday the 13th was going to be our last day of school, and somewhat, funny enough, Friday the 13th. Oddly. <laughs> yeah, the last day of things being normal. Right. Uh, <laughs> so that Monday going back, we, we didn't go back, I'm sorry. Um, that Monday, I had started an online art classes. And um, my initial like idea and response was to be somebody who can come up with something quickly. I fear, I fear for, I still do, but especially in this moment, that time, I fear for the arts. And I feared for the idea of the kids that I had uh, found themselves growing closer and wanting to be more creative and doing more. And uh, kids who, during a time where this is gonna be a lot of stress, this is gonna be a lot of time where people are by themselves and they might need to be able to, uh, you know, look in, inward and like be able to be okay with that. Um, it was really kind of uh, like I, I wanted something to be there. So I started out doing 22 minute lessons. I think the first like three or four were 22 minutes. And I realized I can kind of trip it down for our YouTube society and culture and, um, you know, tighten it up. And I, as of uh, like probably this Friday, I believe I'll have 78 lessons that wow. I've done. Yeah. Um, and I tried to do it every day. Um, like a weekly, a Monday through Friday to give a consistency. Uh, but there were, I want to say about two weeks, not, not back to back, but I believe like two weeks or so that I took off for just mental health mm -hmm. because I was, I was over analyzing the analytics of like how to get more people in. I wasn't realizing that I, I had a huge pickup when I first started it in the first week, there were two news stations came to my house to interview me about it uh, because parents were just, everybody had their kids doing it. They were all sending me the work back. Like it was really big, mm -hmm. uh, but then it cycled down of course, as online learning started mm -hmm. and people were trying to get a hold of that. And luckily the school district I worked at, we were having meetings and we were understanding and looking at all this, but it took that for me to understand, oh wait, it's not what I was doing wasn't important anymore. It did exactly what I needed to do, which it was helping bridge that gap and kind of keep creative. So uh, keep creativity going and give people something to do and something really that was something to norm. Uh, some, I, I've, I've had a lot of parents reach out and like the kids were just excited that there was a video each day because mm -hmm. um, we don't even think about it, but even in, entertainment and a lot of the things that we were doing, like everything was kind of stopped. There was a, a whole to uh, that, that something that happened every day. So I've, I kept with it and I've been using that as kind of a way to keep uh, up with my students um, and to keep involved with my students. On top of that, with the racial uh, aspect of it, um, I, I, I moved from a school district that was really well diverse over <laughs> the, you know, the 20 or 30 years I've been involved with it. It's, it's become more diverse, but it didn't start out that way. Mm -hmm. And I went from that into a school that is very much so um, the majority of the children look like me. Mm -hmm. And I've, uh, I had some experiences over last summer where I taught like that, but it's, it really struck me. And I've, I've been jaded to the idea that, um, they are not used to seeing the the success and what what I've been able to do as an artist and things like that. That as an feasible to them that art has these ability to or the that has the ability to open doors and to be um, financially fruitful or to be something that 
can help them deal with uh, stress or help them express themselves and give them power. Um, so it was that's been something that was really on on my heart to to give that to them, and it's also been something working within my culture more. Like I, I've just been more in tune to that and to see already be going down this road with the educational stuff and watch a lot of kids of all cultures, all dynamics, really be without a lot of their mentors. And I, we know we're with our families, we're with your mothers and your fathers, but in a kid's, uh, a child's life, especially as they get older, we don't think about, you know, the, the food workers that see them on a daily basis, start them out in the morning, give them something to eat and say something nice to them, you know, uh, the teachers that, of course, interact with them, the coaches, you know, the, you know, specialist teachers that might do interest things with interests like music or, you know, arts, but the people who fuel their creativities, their passions, the people who kind of, they bounce off ideas to mirror to them and lost all that. And then the adults that you do have that you're seeing don't really seem to have as much control or charge. And then to see somebody that looks like us once again, just murdered and with no, no recourse, no, to watch all of it boil up and just know that my kids didn't really have anybody to talk to. They didn't really have any way to, to deal or cope with all that. Um, it's, it's, it's been really stressful. Um, it's been really stressful and it's been something that it's a consistent for me to think about, uh, especially once we had uh, a few weeks ago, they had a black lives matter mural painted in front of the Capitol building mm -hmm. um, afterwards or a day after um, there had been a, um, a group organization. I, f I forget what the actual event was called, but they were having um, artists of all cultures come out, share art, make art, and just kind of be together and use it as like a time to be uplifting. I had been there at the Capitol or at the Capitol, the Capitol for over maybe two or three hours. And, you know, multiple groups of kids that came up, some did chalk art with me. Some people came up and painted on the Capitol on. This is a really nice time. And you know, a day after I find out that in that same area, somebody had come through with a motorcycle trying to hit people who are doing art in that same area. Mm -hmm. And over, you know, racial racial tension, something racially despairing. And the people who were painting that, the person they hit wasn't even of color. These kids that I'm dealing with are coming up. It, it, there's just so many different levels to it. And mm -hmm. it scared me because I go, by asking these people to come out and do this art, am I putting them in danger? Mm -hmm. Like, am I making it like, is it different for when my kids go out and they write on the sidewalk? Cause all these kids are outside right now doing just chalk art and trying to be active. Yeah. But when they write something on it or they express themselves and then they write something like black, my black lives matter, or, you know, or they write something is that, are they put, am I putting them in danger by telling them to express themselves in public, mm -hmm. you know, and that, that kind of rattled me. Uh, so there's, it, it's really weird. Also, there is dealing with this. Uh, unfortunately, I've ran into some comment sections oh. <laughs> where, where you have people and it just seems to be this underlying tinge that any art that's done in public from a black person is graffiti. And, I've dealt with that internally in some areas where people have said things like that and told me that the art of my culture was graffiti, which I just thought was really funny. Um, but there, the, the, like these, like, there's these little tones and things that I'm like, I, I've been trying to build this world, like I said, and I've been trying to create this world, but there's been a little bit of a veil lifted to some harsh realities. And you, there are people and there are things in culture that, they are going to have to deal with that we have to deal with. I'm glad we are dealing with. Um, but it's, it's not as, as, uh, it's not as, not my, it's not as, it's not as happy, I guess, the idea originally of what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. Um, you know what I mean? It's, it's not just, I, I thought to me when I first started out with enriching culture, I kind of wanted it to be enriched 
I wanted people to be together. I wanted us to be unified. I wanted us to love where we lived. But now, like the idea of us loving where we live and loving each other is really understanding also like why we I feel like art can needs to show people why we are all important, no matter what color we are, or what um, you know, what we look like, but also that every every person, every every child, which is like like the paintings behind me. I've I've mentioned this before in some of my videos. These are all my students' paintings. And when you see them, you see how unique they are, you see that they're all very different. You know, and that's exactly how those children are. And uh, we just can't have stipulations on people because of the color of their skin. Um, more voices need to be heard. There needs to be more people modeling that. It's just, mm -hmm. I'm, I found myself, I've, I've had to go to more digital means. Um, I'm teaching online. I teach how to draw characters, cartoon characters and popular characters in order to inspire kids. You know, if you, you don't have to learn right now, but I was inspired by the things that I loved. So I try to put out characters that they'll go, ooh, I'll sit down for 10 minutes to try to learn that. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I've kind of learned in that process uh, a couple things. Uh, when this all started looking into characters of color, there aren't that many. <laughs> you know, they're very, it's a lot of tokenism. Like you have a set group of cartoon characters and there's one or two. Mm -hmm. And uh, for some reason, a lot of them wear uh, basketball jerseys <laughs> and, uh, you know, there's like these, these set things. So our story is told, but there was really small window mm -hmm. and it's changing. But I, I noticed that, um, as a creator myself, I'm like, why haven't I created more characters of color? Mm -hmm. And, um, as somebody who loves science fiction, I'm really, really interested right now in telling those type of stories uh, with characters of color, because I just noticed that in the world that I've grown up in, those stories are lack those pe like people of color. And then I, when I've tried to make a connection with my kids, they can't, like, I love Star Wars. Mm -hmm. And I moved to this new school. And it's funny, because I'll start talking to them, and they're just like, yeah, laser guns and stuff. That's not, that's not really cool. Spaceships. But there's no, there's no connection. Like, we that hasn't been for us. And, you know, like growing up, I had Lando Calrissian was the only black person in Star Wars. You had Chief O'Hara. So you have one person to have the experience through, mm -hmm. but that's not how entertainment works on the other side. Cause if it was, that means how many movies have I watched that I couldn't really be a part of, or if I have a character that I could walk through. Mm -hmm. So um, just making sure that as I move forward in the dynamics, like, uh, that I create things that I'm really aware that I'm putting um, more people of color in my work that I'm creating and utilizing. Uh, I'm, I'm allowing kids to see themselves and let themselves be, be reflected. Uh, just like I kind of said about the community building, like I need to allow them to be able to see themselves. It's, it's really funny. I'm, I, since the pandemic started, my hair, I haven't got a haircut. And the kids always used to say, oh, you're bald, you're bald. And I'm like, oh, yeah, because I cut my hair. <laughs> and, but there was, a, there was a disconnect because they don't cut their hair short because they're kids and their hair just grows. Yeah. So I've just been kind of letting it grow because when I've seen a couple of them every now and then, there's like this new connect there because I look more like them. Yeah. And you know, they feel like that. It, it, it's so funny. So, you know, this is this is for them. Oh, this is for them. Uh, but it's it's funny. Uh, yeah. Did I was that three or four more of your questions? Yeah, like six. You're good. You're really good at this. <laughs> well, I, I, and I think that comes from being a teacher. You know what to anticipate. You know what they're probably thinking about and wondering about, and so. You cover your bases beautifully. I try. <laughs> well, I try. You're doing a great job. Well, <laughs> I, I, along those lines, from a teaching perspective, with the unknowns that are surrounding school reopening in the fall, um, because I feel like it just changes hourly at this point, how in your role as a teacher do you see the Black Lives Matter movement guiding the way that you will be working with your students in the coming year? You talk about having students who are seeing someone who looks like them. W what does that look like this fall? Um, I've, I have, it's, it's funny. Um, like I said, I'll be more aware 
-hmm. But uh, the first thing that I, I noticed really teaching a large group or a bigger dynamic of kids was that the relationship that I made with them was the most important thing and what I learned about them. Mm -hmm. um, so m for me, when I have the ability to have dialogues again, and we can have the back and forth conversations, I really want to know where they, what they feel about mm -hmm. this. Um, and I want to hear from them how it's affecting them. Because as adults and as the older generation, we it's really easy for us to just start talking and let kids start forming their opinion off of what we say. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to do that. I want to really hear about how this has really affected them. Um, and I want to have open dialogues where we can talk about this um, and, and kind of give that area uh, or give that safe space for those conversations. Mm -hmm. uh, I've, I've used... I found that art was uh, really big for that. And in order for me to create a successful art class, we had to break down a lot of the walls of like, I, I can't express myself. I can't be honest in here because people are gonna call me names or you know they're gonna say I'm weak because I can draw instead of doing this. But all, all the little you know attitude, things like that. Um, there was a lot of that breaking those walls down was a big thing before this even started. And we really could start having like these great dialogues. I mean, there was times where I think a normal teacher <laughs> uh, might have been like, oh, this is getting a little hairy. We should probably stop this and just like go back to it. And like, I, I was so confident in the fact that I taught them how to be respectful, even when they were passionate, that we could keep going. And nobody was really trying to hurt each other's feelings, but they were being honest. And mm -hmm. I, I think we need to have that. We need to be able to talk because of the, a lot of those things, uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a lot of that. It's going to be a lot of having these, these uh, conversations, making sure that respect is always the number one priority as in, in, in an educational. Uh, well, when it comes to like my, always in my classrooms, I'm a big, I'm a big proponent of basic needs. So if a child is hungry, mm -hmm. if they're tired, if they feel like they're not safe, like if there's literally like some intimate danger like, where it's like a, a random kid, like Nelson Muntz is gonna beat him up <laughs> right. or like, you know, they just know that somebody, is, they're waiting to go back to a bad home mm -hmm. where something, you know, any of these things, you're not gonna be able to learn. Yeah. So if my kids feel like they're in danger, we're not going to get anything done. That's so I feel like there, there's a line up there. Like that's, we're going to have to make the room feel safe for everybody again. Mm -hmm. um, but we are our own as, as a school. I love my, I, my classroom and I love my, my, when I say my classroom, I don't mean, I, I have all 300 kids. <laughs> they all come in there, but all, my, my whole group, I, I love them. I love my team. And I know that, we do, we have such a great culture. We have such a great dynamic, even if we're going to be carrying it out online or however we're going to do it, uh, we will be able to start building again and kind of uh, reestablishing a dynamic where people feel that being safe. Mm -hmm. And then and then from there, I've been a huge proponent of the community service aspect of in my classroom. Um, of course, it's about a grade, of course, where we're going to learn fundamentals, but I like our projects to be geared to things that help our community. Um, I've had my class work with punks with lunch to create, uh, you know, lunch bags with positive sayings on them. Um, we've reached out to uh, different um, care homes and the kids have made cards with positive like messages. And um, we were going to do more with that, unfortunately, before everything started. But they sprung to action for those things. Mm -hmm. Those may I, I like completion time there. I don't like to tell somebody or I like time, not completion, but I like time where kids are engaged. I don't like them to come into my room and I tell them exactly what to do. A lot of my projects are open-ended and I do a lot of more maker station things now where I was moving into that direction. Uh, but I found that if you give them that, but if you also give them, hey, by the time you're done today, out of all your classes, by the time you're done with this class today, you can affect somebody else that you don't even know. You can affect your city. You can make, 
you know, the world a better place just by doing your work. And you get so many kids who just, they'll sit down and they'll do it and they'll put the time and effort in. They'll put that focus in because that matters to them. And that matters mm -hmm. more than if I just said, this is worth a hundred points or 300 points or that, no. And so I, I, that's, that's something that I think is probably going to end up folding into this. Mm -hmm. We might even be able to fold. Um, I might even get a little bit, some of them a little bit more interested in art history mm -hmm. and the history of uh, African-American art and things like that through this. And so, but I, I can't make it a lesson plan because then it's, right. not, <laughs> it's not cool and then they won't want to do it. But right. if I just, throw books randomly or send link, you know what I mean? Yeah. They'll go, wait a minute. I think maybe mm -hmm. we should do this. So <laughs> sneaky. Teachers yeah. are sneaky. Hey, hey. <laughs> I I did an after school program and I kid you not, that I'm sorry if these kids ever find out about this, but I was really big in the first uh what we did a first half an hour was really silent time for reading and homework. Mm -hmm. And I found, I hung out with my kids. I always hang out with my kids. I, I, I didn't have a desk. I was around and about and I found out what they liked and it didn't matter, like whatever it was, but I did the library trip and I got mm -hmm. books and all of what they liked and all their different things. And then the seats they came into every day, I just kind of put the books on the seats or like around them. Uh -huh. And then when it was reading time, they went and got books from the shelf that they know they weren't going to read, go, uh, uh -huh. and then they all started looking in the middle and a girl like cheerleading a book, huh? <laughs> you know, <laughs> and it's like how to draw anime a book, huh? You know, and it's okay. like or, or origami. Do we have paper? Yep, here it is. <laughs> 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 so like, but you, yeah, oh yeah, man. I am. I'm always trying to keep keep people engaged, keep them creative, because uh, my ideas are. I think that I know what's going on, but the the way kids code now, mm -hmm. um, they're the speed and how they can take things and uh, get things out. I want them to be smart about it. I want them to be educated about it. I want them to make with purpose. I don't want them to be just oh, throwing out, throwing up things because they want likes and views. I want them to have substance. So uh, anything I can do to help with that, you know, that's great. Ryan, what do you love about being an artist in Lansing? Mm, I love the, uh, I do a lot of public art. I love, I love the scope and uh, like the different landscapes and uh, cityscapes of Lansing. So when I say that, like I, I do chalk art, so I'll be on the concrete, I'll be on the ground doing things in certain areas. And I mean, being downtown Lansing and being around the, you know, like the smells of the different shops and some of the people downtown and like that compared to being down in Rio town uh, and the vibe down there with the people uh, and the, some of the other art happening down there and the people hanging out or if I'd be being down in Old Town doing it, like there's so much, uh, it's cultures like, it's, it's too easy of a word, um, but they they have each each of their, each of those places have their own dynamic and their own feeling. And uh, it's, it's almost like different types of music. So like, I, I really enjoy being able to create in a place that has different places to inspire the water, you know, the trees, uh, like I said, more of a urban like city scapes with beautiful buildings that we're starting to put more artwork on so they're just filled with colors and lights um it, it's just really a, it's really a fun place um it's it's my springfield <laughs> 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 I, you know this springfield Simpsons reference i like that <laughs> yes springfield is a character yeah. you know we when we the cameras the camera can pan through it 
and in that there's so much stuff going on. It's a character and land seems like that too. You wake up at land scene and you dr you could drive from one side of it to another and zoom in and out. I'm sure on different stores and different people. And it'd be like the opening the Simpsons. Cause you know, like I, it's, I, I laugh at all the people who are always at the Capitol building now when I go in front of it, cause it feels like a Simpsons episode. <laughs> cause it's just like, huh, some, something wacky is happening again at the Capitol today. And you know, thank you for that lens. But, I like that a lot. <laughs> you're welcome. Well, yeah, that, no, that, that's fantastic. Ryan, tell folks where they can find you online. Uh, right now, I'm I am uh, I do a lot of stuff on social media. So uh, Ryan Holmes or Ryan Holmes Art on Facebook. Um, you can also go to uh, YouTube. I have my art lessons. You can find those on Facebook as well, but uh, YouTube under Ryan Holmes. Um, I have, like I said, over 70 going towards 80 lessons, 100 by the time school starts again. Wow. So uh, I will have a little bit of a little bit of a head start, maybe uh, trying to get some of this uh, online learning going or at least being engaging with it. Uh, I'm, I'm going to have to put a little bit more curriculum in. We can't just draw <laughs> cartoon characters, but it's it's going to be engaging. It's going to be fun for all ages. So, uh, cool. yeah. Well, good luck with everything this fall. Anybody who is who is working with kids and going back to school, I just have the utmost respect for the work you're doing. So thank you for that. <laughs> oh, no problem. Thank you. I, I, I ordered my power morpher the other day. Oh, so good. <laughs> if I need to, I can suit up and I should take care of Perfect. everything. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks so much for talking to us today, Ryan. We appreciate it. <laughs> thank you for having me. Have an amazing day. You too. This podcast has been a production of the Arts Council of Greater Lansing. To learn more about them, go to lansingarts.org.